Warning, the following story contains descriptions of graphic violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Parasite refers to the deliberate killing of one's own father and mother, spouse or children, and or close relative. However, the term is sometimes used more generally to refer to the intentional killing of a near relative. It is an umbrella term that can be used to refer to acts of matricide and patricide. Here are three cases of children who murdered their parents. Number one, Sarah Marie Johnson. Sarah Marie Johnson was just like any other 16 year old girl living in Bellevue, Idaho. The high school student adored her dad, Alan, 46, but would often fight with her mom, Diane, 52. Despite this, both her parents always wanted the best for their little girl. When Sarah started dating Bruno Santos, age 19, a rift grew between her and her parents. Bruno had a history of drugs and violence, and when they became aware of this, Diane and Alan told her to break off the relationship, but she disobeyed and instead spent the night at Bruno's. When Alan discovered this, he turned up at the front door and demanded that Bruno stay away from Sarah or he'd contact the police about his shady past. He then took his daughter home and grounded her. But Sarah was fed up with her parents' interference. So at 6 a.m. the next day, she opened her dad's gun case and pulled out a rifle. When she crept into her parents' room while her mom was asleep and dad was showering, first she aimed the rifle at her mother's head and pulled the trigger. The shot alerted Alan and he rushed out of the bathroom in a bathrobe. He saw his dead wife in the bed and then spotted Sarah holding a gun. He begged for her not to fire, but she shot her dad in the chest and he died. Sarah then ran over to a neighbor's, acting distressed when they called 911. When police investigated, they found a bloody pink bathrobe and a latex glove with a gunshot residue in the bin outside the house that contained Alan, Diane, and Sarah's DNA, implicating her in the crime. Johnson was convicted of the murders by an Ada County, Idaho jury on March 16, 2005. She was sentenced to two concurrent life without parole terms, plus 15 years for a firearm enhancement. The Idaho Supreme Court upheld her conviction. In 2012, Johnson's lawyer filed a petition for a new trial, charging that she had ineffective legal counsel in the murder trial. They also cited the absence of any blood spatter on Johnson and the fact that fingerprints on the murder weapon matched those of a renter who was living in the family's guest house. In October 2014, the request was denied. In 2017, Sarah tried to get her life sentence reduced, citing the Miller v. Alabama and Montgomery v. Louisiana Supreme Court rulings. However, her sentence was upheld. Johnson is currently imprisoned at the Pocatello Women's Correctional Center. Number 2. Tyler Hadley On July 16, 2011, in Port Lucie, Florida, Blake Hadley, age 54, and Mary Jo Hadley, age 47, were murdered by Tyler Hadley, their 17-year-old son. Tyler allegedly decided how he wanted to commit the murders a few weeks prior to committing them. He ostensibly told a friend exactly what he was planning to do at that time, noting that having a big party after a parasite had never been done before. Shortly after noon, Tyler wrote on his Facebook wall, party at my crib tonight, maybe. After Tyler's parents returned home that day, he hid their phones and locked their black Labrador, who he suspected would defend his parents in a closet. Shortly before 5 p.m. on the evening of July 16, 2011, Tyler took three pills of ecstasy and then stood behind his mother, Mary Jo, as she worked on her computer in the family room. He attacked his mother with the back end of a claw hammer first. Hearing the screams, his father rushed out of the bedroom to see what was happening. Blake saw Tyler attacking his mother and froze at the sight. Tyler then fatally attacked his father with the hammer. After killing them, he dragged their bodies into the master bedroom and spent three hours cleaning up the blood and throwing household items that reminded him of them on top of their bodies. Tyler first invited people to his party at 12.15 p.m. on the day of the murders, hours before he murdered his parents. He funded the party with his dead parents' credit cards. 
He was spotted at an ATM when his photo was taken as he pulled cash out of the accounts and then picked up some friends. Around 60 people attended the party that night and several are alleged to have noticed the smell of dead bodies. During the party, Tyler apparently told several people about what he had done. Tyler went on a short walk with a friend, Michael Mandel, and confessed the crime. After returning to the party, Mandel discovered the bodies of Blake and Mary Jo in the master bedroom. Mandel did not leave the party immediately. He continued to spend hours with Tyler and even took a selfie with him. Four hours later, Mandel left the party and called a local crime hotline to report the murders. News of the crime was then spread by word of mouth. Hadley was arrested early the next morning. Tyler was 17 at the time of the murders. During his teenage years, Tyler began skipping school and taking drugs. His sentencing documents indicate that he had been involved in myriad crimes prior to these murders. Tyler had participated in drug use, sales, and purchases, and had been criminally detained for arson, vandalism, thefts, aggravated battery, and now murder. There was also a $15,000 civil suit pending after Tyler had hit and injured a child while driving his father's car in June 2010. Prior to the parasites, he had been enrolled in an outpatient drug treatment program which proved to be unsuccessful as he continued to use drugs. Knowing he would soon turn 18 and desperate to get him help, his parents had recently found an inpatient treatment program for him. This was later reported to be the motive for the murders, as Tyler did not want to participate in the program. Tyler was a minor, meaning he could not be sentenced to death by Florida law. In 2014, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. While in jail awaiting sentencing, Tyler had spent his time signing autographs for fellow inmates. He would take a news article about the murder and write, It's Hammer Time, across the article, and sign with his self-proclaimed nickname, Hammer Boy. In April 2016, his sentencing was overturned by an appeal judge who stated the lower court did not consider the correct alternative to a life sentence. Miller v. Alabama had just recently been handed down by the Supreme Court, which changed how juvenile murderers were to be treated within the judicial system. When sentencing occurred, the judicial review mechanism was not in place, and Tyler was entitled to having judicial review at some point in the future now that the law had evolved. Although the original judge had worked hard to meet the requirements of the new law during the sentencing hearing, the procedure had not yet been codified, so a new sentencing hearing would cure both of those defects and ensure Tyler received the justice due to him. In December 2018, Tyler was resentenced to life in prison, but this time, the judicial review mechanism was properly put into place. Hadley is imprisoned at the Okeechobee Correctional Institution. Number 3. Bashid McLean In February 2013, the Bronx community was rocked by a gruesome and horrifying crime that would forever change the lives of those involved. Bashid McLean, a resident of the Bronx, gained infamy for the murder of his own mother, Tanya Bird. This tragic incident not only shocked the community, but also raised questions about the motives and mental state of the individual involved. As we delve into the details of this disturbing case, we will explore the complexities surrounding mental health in the criminal justice system and the importance of seeking justice while addressing the mental health needs of the accused. To truly understand the circumstances that led to the heinous crime committed by Bashid McLean, it is essential to examine his background and upbringing. Bashid was born and raised in the Bronx, a neighborhood known for its high crime rates and social challenges. Growing up in a volatile environment, Bashid faced numerous hardships that shaped his worldview and contributed to his troubled mental state. In February 2013, the life of Tanya Bird, a loving mother, came to a horrifying and untimely end. Bashid McLean, her own son, was responsible for her brutal murder. The details of this crime are nothing short of disturbing, as Bashid used a power saw to dismember his mother's body. The shock and disbelief that reverberated throughout the community were palpable, leaving many wondering what could have driven a son to commit such a horrendous act against his own mother. Following the discovery of Tanya Bird's dismembered body, 
the legal system begin its pursuit of justice. Bashid McLean was arrested and charged for the murder of his mother. The trial that ensued was a complex and emotional roller coaster, with the defense arguing that Bashid's mental health should be considered in his case. However, the prosecution presented overwhelming evidence that pointed to Bashid as the sole perpetrator of this heinous crime, leading to his eventual conviction. Bashid McLean's case serves as a glaring example of the complexity surrounding mental health in the criminal justice system. Throughout the trial, Bashid's defense attorney argued that his client's mental health issues should be taken into account, potentially leading to a different outcome. This raises important questions about how the legal system addresses mental health concerns and whether there is a need for reforms to ensure justice is served while also addressing the mental health needs of the accused. The impact of Tanya Bird's murder and Bashid McLean's conviction reverberated throughout the Bronx community and beyond. The shock and horror that accompanied this crime have left a lasting scar on the community, highlighting the need for support and healing. The aftermath of such a tragedy often extends far beyond the immediate family, affecting friends, neighbors, and the community at large. The case of Bashid McLean and the shocking murder of his mother, Tanya Bird, will forever remain etched in the annals of criminal history. This tragic incident has shed light on the complexities surrounding mental health and the criminal justice system and raised important questions about the quest for justice and the need for mental health reforms. As we move forward, it is crucial that we strive to create a system that not only seeks justice, but also provides support and rehabilitation for individuals struggling with mental health issues. Only then can we hope to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Bashid McLean is now serving 25 years to life in the New York State prison system. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you.